Welcome to another Foldit Lab Report. I'm BKEP here at the Institute for Protein Design in Seattle. If this is your first time tuning in to a Foldit Lab Report, we produce these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science behind Foldit. In this video, we want to tell you more about how Foldit is helping in the fight against COVID-19. There's a series of puzzles that you can play right now that may give us a better understanding about how to stop coronavirus in its tracks. If you've played Foldit recently, you've probably seen our puzzles for the SARS-CoV-2 Cash Challenge. In the Cash Challenge, researchers from around the world compete to design small molecules, all for the same target. After submissions close in late November, the Cash organizers will test all of the compounds submitted by all researchers. The current Cash target is a protein from SARS-CoV-2 called NSP13. This is an RNA helicase enzyme. Now, to better understand what this protein does, let's talk about the life cycle of this virus. The virus that causes COVID-19 belongs to a genus called beta coronavirus. There's also an alpha and gamma coronavirus genus. Just like how human cells have genomes, viruses have their own. The human genome is made of DNA, while the coronavirus genome is made of RNA. And in fact, beta coronaviruses have some of the largest RNA genomes of any known virus. When a coronavirus infects you, its RNA genome gets implanted into your cells. This viral genome contains instructions for making about 16 different viral proteins. And all of these proteins help the virus do one thing, proliferate. See, in biology, the goal is always to reproduce, and viruses are no different. They don't reproduce by having babies or laying eggs. Their biology is much simpler than that. Instead, they make copies of their genomes and stuff it into viral capsids, which then go on to infect and spread the genome to more and more cells. One problem, though, is that the virus's huge genome comes coiled up in a ball so that it can fit inside the tiny viral capsid. You can think of it like a suitcase that's packed way too full. Before any of that stuff can be used, it needs to be unpacked, or in the case of RNA, unwound. The COVID-19 virus, like many other RNA viruses, uses an unpacking enzyme called a helicase to unfurl the long RNA molecules in its genome. If we can block this helicase, we can cripple the replication of the virus and stop it from multiplying. And that could put a stop to infection. However, NSP13 is a big protein, over 600 residues. You could think about it like the Death Star from Star Wars. Before Luke could blow it up, he had to know where its weak spot was so he could take the whole thing down in one shot. For the NSP13 helicase, that weak spot just might be its RNA binding site. The helicase must grab on to a molecule of RNA to unwind it. So if we could interfere with that RNA binding event, we could disrupt the function of the protein. So that's what we're now doing in Foldit. By playing the cache puzzles, you can design a new small molecule that can bind to the RNA binding site of the helicase molecule and block its function. When the puzzle series closes later this month, the Foldit team will pick the best solutions from Foldit players and submit those for testing to the cache competition. We'll get to see how well the Foldit community does in a head-to-head -head competition with professional drug developing scientists. And with that news about our puzzles out of the way, I wanna jump straight into this month's design of the month. For this, we're gonna switch gears and look at a ligand binder design from puzzle 2211, the CAMP ligand binder design puzzle. Unlike the cache puzzles, in this case, we want to design a new protein that can bind to a target ligand. In this case, cyclic AMP. This ligand binder design was designed by Ickville Diesenamen. And maybe the easiest way to look at it is on the Foldit website. You can use the molecular viewer to pull it up right in a browser. And we can even click on the ligand here to see which contacts are made. And this gives us some idea of where hydrogen bonds might form, or at least where polar atoms are close enough. And remember that you can always copy a solution to a clipboard from the Save Solutions menu and then paste it into the Foldit forums so that you can view your own solutions and share them with other players using this molecular viewer. Now, if we look at it in Foldit, in the application, you can load up the Design of the Month puzzle. Um, we can see this protein in the Foldit protein design view that I like to see um, all of the blue and red polar nitrogen and oxygens that need to make hydrogen bonds. And if we look at the 
CAMP ligand here in the binding pocket, we see lots of great H bonds to all of these polar oxygen groups. This, I think, will be the most difficult part of binding CAMP is this charged phosphate group down on the end, which has lots of polar oxygens that need to make hydrogen bonds. And Ickfield Diesenmann's design looks to do this pretty well, actually. Uh, we have a tryptophan and then a triplet of serines that satisfy all of the oxygens on this phosphate group. Um, it looks like there is still a hydroxyl here that looks a little bit buried, um, but might be able to make a hydrogen bond with some atoms on this helix in the backbone. Um, but this could be a little bit of a cause for concern. I see that the, uh, the buried unsats um, objective does not flag this, this atom, so maybe water can get in there and satisfy this atom without too much trouble. Um, the other polar atoms up here on the, uh, on the outside of the molecule seem like they can also reach water and make the necessary hydrogen bonds. Um, I do like this fold that Ickville Dizanaman has come up with. Um, we see that they uh, abandoned the starting structure and decided to refold this protein backbone from scratch. Um, and this looks like a reasonable protein design to me. We see lots of orange hydrophobic residues on the inside and lots of blue hydrophilic residues on the outside. Um, and no bonds in the interior. The only polar atoms are just right here in the binding pocket, which seems to make good contacts with the CAMP. And um, the other thing we can look at is the contact surface uh, is about 200, which is great for this molecule. This is almost maxing out that objective. Um, and it means that the binding pocket here is very um, tightly packed around the CAMP, so it creates a a nice complementary pocket that is the perfect shape for the CAMP molecule. Um, so all in all, this looks like a great molecule. We want to make sure that um, our designs are, they look good on alpha fold. So I encourage um, all players to submit your designs to the alpha fold server for predictions and make sure that alpha fold is able to predict that your protein will fold up with high confidence and that it will fold into the same structure that you submitted with a high similarity. Remember, when you're working on a Foldit puzzle, you can always use the Upload for Scientists button to make sure that Foldit scientists see the solutions that you are most excited about. And in fact, I think every Foldit player should do this at least once for every Foldit puzzle. That's all we have for this month. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, we'll see you next time.